Let me tell you a story. I was 16 years old. I was pushing towards my 17th birthday. And I just got home from school. It was a Wednesday afternoon. I lay in my bed. And all I could think about was either watching porn or going to find somewhere I could buy weed. And this went on for my whole teenage years. I grew up in the countryside. I would walk into the village where I lived and I would meet up with these dodgy characters who would sell weed at the time. And I would do this on a weekly basis, spending any money I had just to get weed. And I would go home and I would roll it up and I would smoke it, hoping that my parents didn't find out what I was doing. And that was pretty much the start of my addiction to weed. For years this went on, seven, eight years, up until my early 20s, where I would waste so much money, so much energy, so much time going out there and looking for different ways where I could smoke weed. Disowning relationships, ruining friendships, and just being focused on how can I get more weed. And the problem was I was surrounded by so many people who were doing the exact same thing. So it felt very normal to me. And it got to a point where I was in my early 20s and I was stressed out. I had just come home from my shitty retail job and I was stressed out, right? Tough life. And I would go around and I would look at my carpet floor, trying to find pieces of weed that I could roll into a joint and stop. And after enough of those times, it got to a point where I was like, I'm a fucking loser. That's what I was thinking to myself. Now that was over six years ago at this point that I've been free from weed for over four years. And the reason I mention this is because I know there's a lot of guys out there who are probably going through something very, very similar. And even though it may seem harmless, and even though it may seem like it's something that's not that bad, and everything can be done in moderation, and we just need to balance things. These are things that we tell ourselves, when in reality, we know the truth. We know that if the things that we're doing, the addictions that we have, if they're hindering our progress as a man and they're stopping us from truly stepping into our power, we know at the back of our mind that we need to stop doing them. So in this video, this is the three phases of removing addictions. And the way I see it is it's helped me quit weed, quit porn, quit alcohol, and quit smoking cigarettes. And in this video, I'm going to share with you these three phases and how I think about how to remove these addictions and how I think about the progression when it comes to each one of these three phases. Okay, so let's jump into it. The first one is labeling the enemy. So the first thing that we really need to do when it comes to any addiction is to really go ahead and see it as the enemy. Because when we look at what addiction is, addiction is an infatuation. It's an obsession with something that is keeping us addicted. Okay, this could be social media scrolling, it could be weed, it could be porn, it could be alcohol, whatever it is. What we need to understand is that we are putting this thing that we're addicted to on a pedestal. We are infatuated and obsessed with this thing, so it holds power over us. Anything that we are obsessed with holds power over us, which in turn reduces our personal power as men. And that's the last thing we want, especially when we're trying to make something of ourselves. We have seen this and labeling it as the enemy. And what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, everything is wrong with this addiction. Everything is wrong with it. I need to stop doing it because this bad thing that it does, if you talk about smoking weed, for example, it ruins my health. It stops me from thinking clearly. It stops me from being socially you know, excited. It stops me from being energetic. Write down all the things that are negative about this particular addiction that we're doing so that we're really flipping our perceptions so that we're focused on all the negative things that this brings into our life. And if you're watching any type of self-improvement content, you'll notice that this is a common occurrence, right? A lot of people out there will label the things as will label the things as bad. But sometimes this is not enough to really be able to remove the constraints. So what we have to do is start to identify as someone who does not do that thing anymore. The only time that I truly stopped smoking was when I stopped identifying as a smoker. Means when someone offered me a cigarette, I said, no, I'm not a smoker. And you do that enough times, you start to reaffirm the identity within your mind. Because everything starts in our identity. Our identity is our core. It's who we, who we say that we are. And we will, we will do everything that we possibly can to stay in alignment with that identity, which is why identity is so, so powerful. So this is one of the key things. So once we've enabled the addiction that we have as completely negative, we can see it as this negative thing that is ruining our lives. We're very clear on the impact that's having in us, in our lives right now, for the people around us, for our family, for our future self as well, for the future progress and it's also going to be stunting. I'll never forget the time I sat down with my sister and she said to me, it's like, I can't have a conversation with you anymore because you're always high. And that flipped the switch for me. It was one of the key things that led me to actually start to look at even quitting in the first place because I saw weed as this harmless thing. I saw it as this thing that was nice to do. It was, it was chill. It was really, it was relaxing. But at the end of the day, it was causing more harm. It was causing more pain to my family, to me, and to the life that I was trying to create. So this is when I got really clear on all the negatives that it was causing in my life. So I was really 
focused on that side of the polarity. Okay, and we're going to come back and balance it in a second, okay, because this is also not good. We don't want to be lopsided when it comes to our perception, but we'll get to that in a minute. If you don't understand me, that's all good. We're going to get to that in a second. Identity is going to be extremely important here. Identity is going to be a thing that holds this whole process in place. Because if you're out there and you're like, I'm going to quit weed, but you still identify as someone who smokes weed, you still identify as a stoner, for example, or you identify as someone who watches porn or someone who identifies as, I just drink occasionally, but you want to quit alcohol. And you're never truly going to quit because it's always going to be an option. You want to completely remove any option available or we could actually fall back into this bad habit. Okay. So identity is going to be one of the most important parts. Of it. And the last part of this phase is really understanding that our environment is going to play a massive role in all of this because we can identify as the person who doesn't do the thing anymore. We can understand that all the things that we're doing and, and the associations that we have with this habit is negative. But if we are in an environment and we're trying to quit smoking and everyone around us is always smoking and always offer offering the cigarettes, then it's very likely you're going to go back to that. One of the big moves that I had to make when it came to quitting cigarettes and weed specifically was completely remove myself from the friend groups that I had where smoking was something that everybody was doing. Now, I was making a change in my life anyway. At the time, I was starting up my first business and I was getting into self-improvement and I was, I was having the intention to change my life, which helped a lot. But I had to self-isolate. I had to remove myself from a lot of these friend groups which helped me stay away from the bad habit in the first place because I wasn't identifying as someone who did that anymore. I was very clear on all the negative effects it was having on me, present and my future reality, the people around me as well. So I was labeling it as the enemy. And then lastly, my environment was changed, which made everything much, much easier when it came to removing the power that this had over me. Now, you might say that the majority of the work is really done in phase one. And you would be right by saying that because in phase one, we're really removing a lot of the, the power it has over us because we're not doing it anymore. But the problem is that not a lot of people talk about is that there's a phase two, which is balancing your perception and clearing your mind from the guilt and the shame that is associated with all of those past bad behaviors that you consider now negative. Because like we said, in this first phase here, for us to be able to move away from the addiction, we need to label it as negative. We need to push it over to the side and say that that's not me. I don't do any of these negative things anymore. But at the back of your mind, you still know that you did them in the past. And that's dangerous because that can shape your self-image. Now, a lot of people don't go to this phase. They just stay here and they just say, that's a negative thing. That's something I don't associate with anymore. And yes, on the surface, consciously, that is a good thing to do. But what we want to do is actually pull back the layers and remove the guilt and remove the shame and all the negative emotions that we have towards this so that we can raise our energy. Because really what we're trying to do in any of these things is we're trying to get out of a lower state of being and all of these lower dense emotions that pull us down and drag us down on a day-to-day -day basis that are caused by these addictions and also feed back into the addictions. We're trying to clear our mind, balance our perception and see that in reality, the guilt that we feel, the shame that we feel isn't actually just negative. We can also see the positive size in all of this. Because if we stick with the perception that everything that we just did in the past was negative, this actually means that we associate ourselves in our mind as the person who used to do those things. So there's still a part of us that holds onto that guilt and that shame that doing these addictions in the first place actually had over us, which means that we haven't fully taken back our power from this addiction in the first place, okay? So in phase two, what we're doing is we're clearing our mind, we're balancing our perception, we're seeing how this guilt and this shame that we felt from these past addictions has actually served us. It actually gives us some sort of meaning and purpose that we can go out and we can help others with. And this is actually a very positive thing, which means if we look at this negative that we've associated with this addiction, now here we're looking at how did this actually serve me? This is all part of my journey. This is actually part of me becoming the best version of myself, which means that everything that happened here was meant to happen. It was meant to happen because now you've transcended the addiction. You come over to this phase here and you can now see how this is serving you because everything that you've learned is something you can now help someone else overcome. It can help. It feeds into your character. It feeds into you developing as a person because you didn't stay here. A lot of people stay in the addiction. You decided not to, which means when you move to this phase, you can now, you can now see the positive side of the guilt and shame and you can transmute that emotion to something more powerful, which then brings us to phase three. And phase three is when we really look at this and we see everything for what it is and we take back our power. This is when we can start to meditate. We can start to process these emotions that we feel, whether they're positive, whether they're negative, and we can allow those emotions to actually flow through us 
so that we can accept, first of all, the person that we used to be is someone that we no longer are anymore. We can now see clearly that these addictions have served us greatly and we can help someone else overcome these things. We can, you know, we can go out there, we can live our purpose and we can become more of who we truly are and so we can truly take back our power. Because the only real way to take back our power is to understand that everything in life is a lesson. Everything in life is serving you in some way, shape, or form, whether it's an addiction or whether it's something else that's happening in your life right now. When you can truly see the lesson in everything, you start to take back your power. Because really all we're trying to do here is we're trying to see the world clearly. We're trying to see that everything is serving us. We're trying to see that the challenges that we have faced in our minds are simply just lessons for us to learn, to pass on to somebody else. We take back our power. We own this whole situation. It's part of who we are. It's a part of our story. It's something that we can share with the world. It's something that we can use to empower other people and empower ourselves. And that is truly what we're trying to do. Okay, so that's the three phases of removing addictions the way I see it. Hopefully this is helpful to you. If you want to learn more about some of the tools and processes that I've used to transform my life over these last four years, you're going to want to check out this video here. I'll see you there.